Damn, another week has gone by already. Jesus, I swear, it feels like yesterday that I just uploaded another Setup Wars video. Time is flying. Time is flying. This is crazy. But yeah, what's happening, guys? I'm Tech Warriors. Welcome to Setup Wars, episode 261, Ultimate Edition. That's why, right, guys, we're doing another Ultimate Edition because why the hell not? You guys seem to enjoy it a lot, so let's keep the momentum going with Season 5. Uh, but yeah, with that said, uh, sit back and relax because <laughs> you know what time it is. As a reminder, you guys can always pick up a cheap Windows CD key for less than $15. Just click on my link below and use the code TS20 for an extra 20% off. Once you get your CD key, just visit the activation settings in Windows and change your product key. It's that simple. Kicking off the episode is Daniel and his super clean, ultra-wide setup. He's a tattoo artist from Canada who's also an active member on my Discord server. And get this, it took him a total of two days to build a setup from scratch. Upgrading your setup is fun, don't get me wrong, but there is nothing quite like building your dream setup from scratch. That right there is a vibe. And I'm getting those vibes just by looking at this setup. I'm really glad he went with the car of the countertop for this color scheme because it adds a soft layer of contrast that isn't too distracting. I feel like the car of the countertop or any other light wood like it will make a great addition to a white themed setup. So this is actually Daniel's second feature on Setup Wars. If you remember, he was featured back in episode 231 with a pretty sweet dual monitor setup, but he wasn't happy with it, so he decided to rebuild it completely. The setup is built for both gaming and work, and he does all that on the Odyssey G9 49-inch Super Ultrawide from Samsung. I'm starting to see this monitor pop up everywhere on Setup Wars. It's crazy. In addition to the Ultrawide, he also has a smaller tablet underneath, which he uses as a sensor panel, which, by the way, I recently made a video on it, so if you guys want to know how it's done, and you want to put this in your PC, then check out the video, I'll drop a link to it down below. For our peripherals, we got a Logitech G915 TKL keyboard paired with a matching G Pro mouse in white, but take a look at what he did here. It kind of looks like those bizarre illusions that makes no sense logically, but when you look closely, you can see that he used a white cable clip to hide the hole that he drilled for his coiled cable. That is pretty damn smart if you ask me. It does look much cleaner as opposed to having the cable run across the desk. This is an option for you guys out there that are also rocking a custom coiled cable. I'm definitely stealing this idea for my new setup, that's for sure. Speed of cables, I do have to point out the improved cable management. This specific raceway that he used in the back is perfect for routing cables from the top of the desk because of the small cutouts on the sides. This allows you to keep the perfect cable path towards the back of the desk and into a single rack underneath. Moving on to audio, it looks like he's still rocking the same Arctis 7 white headphones, but he did upgrade the speakers and got an extra headset as well. It's nice to see that he upgraded his tiny creative pebbles for the Kanto YU2 speakers, and he also picked up the Logitech G733 in white, which is hanging off in a pegboard in the back. I gotta say, man, these white pegboards look really nice and complement the setup. And bonus points for keeping them symmetrical, by the way. Another thing I've noticed is that you finally picked up a boom arm for your Blue Yeti microphone. Tell me right now in the comment section that isn't more convenient for you. The setup isn't the only thing he upgraded. He also built himself a brand new system inside the same case. And man, this thing is a complete beast, okay? We got the Ryzen 9 5900X with 32 gigs of RAM and the Asus Strix RTX 3090 OC edition. Say it with me, guys. Damn! That is an absolute beast. Imagine building a brand new PC because you weren't happy with your old one. Oh wait, I can't imagine that. But yeah, overall very happy with all the changes you've made. I think your setup looks 100 times better than before. And thanks again for coming back on the show. This next setup is gonna completely blow your mind and your underwear right off you. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the Cyber Junk Project. This is actually the third time he's come on the show. He prefers not to show his real name anymore and just go by the name of CJP, aka Cyber Junk Project. The reason being is because the setup has a cyberpunk vibe to it while using junk parts. And if I told you how much he spent making this setup, you guys won't believe me. Aside from the actual gear, he has spent a total of $104.31 on the custom decoration. And man oh man, do I have a lot to show you guys. So for starters, it took him a total of seven months to complete this setup for the purpose of productivity. He actually doesn't game on this setup. 
He also took inspiration from the RX-0 Unicorn Gundam, as you can probably tell from the wallpaper and the theme of the setup. But I gotta say, I do prefer the Cyberpunk theme a lot better, as those are my favorite colors. And of course, I can't ignore the amazing wallpaper that you picked. I just love how you tied in the Cyberpunk Ed wallpaper perfectly with the theme of the setup. Alright, so let's break it down real quick. He's rocking triple 24-inch Samsung curve monitors that he mounted against the desk using a single mount. And the desk he's using is actually a Linman tabletop with a few legs, but it's modded. He skinned the surface with glossy white vinyl, which gave it this shiny reflective surface, and he added LED strips on the edges with the Musada Raceways to help diffuse the lighting. He actually took a very cheap table from Ikea and made it look cool and expensive. Nicely done. The only things on the table are the Keytron K4 keyboard and the Logitech G900 mouse. Both of them are wireless, which means he didn't have to drill any holes in the desk. In fact, he was so dedicated to the minimalistic theme that he ended up mounting the speakers underneath the desk on the cable racks with a subwoofer directly in the middle facing the ground. Interesting choice, but I get why he's trying to do that. The PC powering this amazing battle station still has the same specs and it looks like it's mounted on the wall in the same place as before. We got the Ryzen 7 2700X paired with the NVIDIA RTX 2080 Founders Edition. Alright, so specs aside, what makes this setup so incredible is that he made all of the decorative pieces by hand using cheap material. Everything that you see here is made out of plastic, styrofoams, cardboard, photo paper, and other miscellaneous materials. That's how he was able to keep the costs so low. Just like every amazing setup, everything starts with an imagination. And to bring that imagination to life, you have to first put it on paper, or a computer screen in this case. You want to be able to draw out the concept you envision to ensure that it comes out exactly as you imagine it would. After the concept was complete, he bought all the materials and started cutting the parts into shapes and designs. He also used glue to stick them together to create the bigger parts. After that, he added aluminum foils as the foundation before sticking on LED strips because the aluminum helps the LED strips become more brighter due to its reflective surface. But he had to do something about curving the strips, otherwise you'll be able to see each individual diode. Well, this is where he thought of a genius way to diffuse the light using white impra board, and the final result just looks insane. But I gotta say, the coolest thing from this setup and the icing on the cake for me is that it can transform. What you're looking at right now is called the destroyer mode. Switching over to window mode opens up the two panels in the back. Are you kidding me? I love that he found a really cool solution to take advantage of the sunlight, but also he can close it off whenever he wants to without affecting the setup. If anything, this is actually a part of the setup which makes it that much cooler. This is what I'm talking about, you guys. All right, these types of setups is what gets me really moist and feels the fiery passion that I have deep inside in my genitals. I feel like it's been a while since we've seen creativity of this magnitude, okay? We need to see more people using their imagination like this. This is yet another example that you don't need a lot of money to build a badass setup. The fact that this was done under a small budget is what makes it even more mind-blowing. And for that reason, and a lot of other reasons of course, I am more than happy to present CJP with the 40th seal of approval. Oh my god, and this is exactly the first person to own two seal of approvals in the history of Setup Wars. What an achievement, my guy. I mean, the fact that you're able to transform this into this with a small budget is just incredible. I'll never forget your first ever setup submission on the show back in October 2018. It's very inspiring to see how far you've come in your setup journey. I couldn't be more proud. And I know you're moving really soon, which means that you're gonna have to take apart this masterpiece and then start all over at your new place, which is unfortunate. But on the bright side, you might have a new setup submission for us. So, you know, I think I speak for everyone here on the show that we're super excited to see what your next project is gonna be. So as always, if you do complete your setup, you know where to bring it. So yeah, thank you so much again for participating on the show. If you wanna claim your updated plaque, CJP, toss an email to setupwarsprizes at gmail.com. Well done, my guy. Coming in at number three is Gary from Germany. We have a pretty sick looking quad display setup built for gaming and editing videos. I actually like what he did with those acoustic panels. It's different. You know, that to me looks way cooler than what I normally see people do with acoustic panels. It is a bit ambitious covering up the entire wall, but it does work with his setup, especially with that RGB strip on the inside. 
Because of the texture of the acoustic panels, it sort of looks like those infinity mirrors at first glance. Pretty cool. So we got four of the same 27 inch ASUS monitors slapped against the wall for consistency with a Rode NT microphone arching over one of the monitors from the back. Actually, if you look closely, you can see an extra mount against the wall, which I'm assuming is used for his face cam during the streams. There isn't any camera on there now because he is using it to take these pictures. Moving on to peripherals, we got the Corsair K63 keyboard with an M65 mouse with beautiful cable management, even from the RGB mouse pad. I like how he ran the cable underneath the pad. And finally, we got the PC powering it all with the Ryzen 7 3800X and the ASUS RTX 2070. I wish there were more pictures to show you guys of the setup, but that is all I got from Gary. Regardless, it's a pretty sweet streaming setup we got here. Thank you for sharing this with us. Next up is Nurin coming all the way from Malaysia with this awesome gaming room. This guy's bedroom is bigger than my living room. I'm not even joking. I mean, look at the size of this thing. There's even extra space left. Is this common in Malaysia, by the way? Let me know in the comment section. He was able to build two setups in here for the purpose of gaming. We got the PC setup on the left and an entertainment setup on the right directly in front of his bed. So that way you can lay down and watch videos or game on his PS5. Nice. So the main PC gaming setup has another Samsung Odyssey G9 monitor that's mounted against the IKEA Linman. Underneath that, we got the Corsair K100 keyboard and a wireless Razer Basilisk Ultimate mouse. I love how the soundbar kind of covers some of the cables going across the desk, so it's not as noticeable. But I would probably end up picking up a boom arm for your siren microphone, just so you don't have to constantly pick it up and move it around. Aside from the soundbar, he does have two pairs of headphones that he keeps underneath the desk on hangers. We have the Sony XM4s for multimedia and the Arctis 9s for gaming. And speaking of which, he games on his custom PC featuring the Ryzen 7 3700X and the Galaxy Hall of Fame RTX 3090. I love seeing those Lee and Lee streamers. Such a clean looking PC. I think you've done a fine job decorating the room as well. You got both setups blending in seamlessly together with excellent lighting. I mean, what else can I say? It's a vibe. Awesome setup, Norden, and thank you for sharing this with us. Speaking of a vibe, wrapping up the episode is Renee's Pandemic Paradise. I already love the name. He's the director of HR who's also a US Army veteran. He's been in active duty for eight years. Nice. So as the name suggests, he built a paradise where you can escape to play games and work from. We have two separate setups in a corner desk layout. One thing I've noticed right off the bat is the center Alex unit. I'm not sure why people still do this, but you know, it's not ideal using it as a support like that because you're not able to use the top drawer and reaching the rest of the drawers is inconvenient. It's better off just using a couple of legs for support. The main setup is used for gaming because it's rocking a 27 inch 240 hertz monitor that's stacked on a 34 inch ultra wide. There is also a smaller 7 inch display on the desk that's being used as a sensor panel. I'm absolutely loving those speaker mounts. Such a great way to lift the speakers to ear level while also freeing up extra space on the desk. Nicely done. Moving on to peripherals, you got the Razer Huntsman 60% keyboard and the Corsair Night Sword RGB gaming mouse with a supplemental keypad from Razer. Those are some nice custom painted Astro A40s by the way. I guess Renee was going for a tricolor theme setup with white and black being the prominent colors and red being the accent. The same color scheme is carried over to the custom PC featuring the 9900K and an RTX 2080 Ti. I personally think the red cables and the AIO sleeving in here give the PC just enough of a kick to stand out. Very nice choice of colors. So that is the gaming setup, which is powered by the custom PC, and then he has a strictly working setup adjacent to that, which is powered by a laptop, and he's got that mounted underneath the desk, among other things, like his Wi-Fi routers, modems, and pretty much all the cable management stuff is bundled here in one side. He's got the laptop hooked up to a 34-inch ultrawide from Biotech and a 27-inch in vertical mode for answering emails. It's also nice to see that he skinned all four bezels in white for consistency. And for peripherals, you got a budget $35 keyboard and mouse combo from Amazon and an anchor speaker for conference calls. The setup is definitely more on the simple side, like it doesn't have any flashy RGB lighting or expensive gear, just essentials to get the work done. You can definitely see where most of the budget went to between both of these setups. I also gotta mention this real quickly, but I think it's pretty badass that you build arcades as a side hustle. And for the longest time, I've been wondering what I should do with the loft at my new home. And this kind of gave me a pretty sweet idea of turning it into an arcade loft. But either way, it's a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you, Renee, for coming on. 
Corsair IQ software brings your entire setup together, creating a fully immersive ecosystem. Take control by customizing lighting effects and creating personalized profiles for any application. Synchronize your battle station in a brilliant display of color using preset patterns or create your very own. With Corsair IQ, you can even monitor system performance, run RGB settings, and control fan speeds from a single interface. To learn more, click the link below. And that will do it for today's video. As always, make sure you guys comment below. Let me know which of these setups was your absolute favorite. Although I got a feeling we all have one setup in mind. As always, if you guys are enjoying Season 5 of Setup Wars, make sure to backhand that like button to let me know. And if you're new here, maybe consider subscribing because I do host Setup Wars every single Monday. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you very soon. I forgot my line. In the next one. Yeah, that's right. Okay. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.